as we approach the second month of stay-at-home orders, arguments about liberty and freedom, we see that the American government is struggling to balance its promises to the donor class and making sure that the facade of taking care of the working class remain in place. Both the Democrats and the Republicans offered a pittance to the working class to ensure that they'd stay docile and passive while the corporate elites, the boss class, and the pimps of the parties got richer during a global pandemic. Right now, Steve Mnuchin has requested that all the large publicly traded companies that received the small business loan have till May 7th to return them or face harsh consequences. I mean, they could, they could get a, a, a stern talking to uh, or, or, or possibly uh, some, some wrist slappage or, or worse yet, a half-hearted use of the word disappointed used towards their actions. Mm. Meanwhile, if you're uh, a black person in this country, you, you, you will still be arrested for drug charges that may or may not be real. And, and if you're brown, you're clearly an enemy of the state. Look, rules are rules. Rules are rules. Without these laws, society will uh, fall apart into uh, an uh, unequal dystopia. Now, Mnuchin, if Mnuchin really wanted to prove that he is a man of the people, he would ask Wall Street to return that unnecessary $5 trillion gift that the United States government gave to them in the beginning of the pandemic. So how did these corporations even receive these small business loans? Well, uh, that's pretty simple. They utilized loopholes that I'm sure Steve Mnuchin didn't know were written in there. Right? He's like, well, how, how, how did these even get in here must have been that scamp of an intern we hired huh Reginald huh Reginald is always pulling pranks around the office you know we like to have fun at the United States Treasury Department oppressing the American people with economic sanctions can be a tough job so sometimes you just gotta have fun now companies like Shake Shack did return the 10 million dollar loan they received once they realized that the real small businesses were not able to access the funds. The CEO must have realized how silly an additional $10 million must look in their already giant piles of cash that they bathe in. Now, the question remains, why in the fuck did Shake Shack even apply for the loan in the first place? I mean, what did they think was going to happen? That, that somebody would come out and be like, hey, you silly goose, huh? This isn't for you. Uh, you were trying to get that loophole, I bet. Oh, oh, Reginald, that scamp, the CEO would exclaim and withdraw their application, I guess. Now, Ruth Chris Steakhouse had to literally have their arm twisted to return the loan they didn't need. They said that they had planned on repaying the loan within the parameters written in the bill. But they decided to accelerate that repayment. Uh, uh, what? But th I mean, this is like getting caught punching orphans in the street and then saying, well, I mean, you know, I, I planned on taking them to the hospital later, but, but, but I guess I'll just do it now. I mean, Ruth Chris Steakhouse was trying to look like they were the good guys here and had an epic fail moment. I mean, if you could accelerate repayment within a few days, you paid off the entire loan in a couple of days, then you didn't need the fucking loan to begin with. This comes as the House of Representatives is going on an extended, high paid hiatus. Maryland Representative Steny Hoyer says that it, it, it's in recommendation of the House doctor, the House of Representatives doctor, that says that due to the increased cases of the virus in D.C., it's probably not safe for legislators to meet. As they take their paid vacations, House leader and resident crypt keeper Nancy Pelosi says that it's time, it's, it, it, it's for the health and safety of, of those office workers and, and that custodial staff too. Now, are these office and custodial staff going to receive a paycheck on the congressional hiatus or are they just out to fend for themselves as the queen of Yoth Queen eats all the ice cream she wants in her San Francisco mansion? I'd wager that it's the latter of the two. 
Now, Chuck Schumer says that the Senate must meet to legislate and hold this administration accountable for its mistakes that it has made, like the the, 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 the stimulus check and the, and, the, and the small business loans and the inappropriate use of the Defense Production Act. But lest we forget, less than a month ago, Chuck Schumer was one of the people responsible for all the problems we're facing in addition to the pandemic. Lest we forget, Schumer and Pelosi and all of the corporate Democrats were against a direct cash payment to Americans at the start of all this. The Democrats are a master class in gaslighting. They manipulate and twist the narrative into a pretzel and try to sell it to you as a biscotti. So who's holding them accountable for being one party with two faces? Now, the income of the continued widening uh, 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 of the, uh, uh, the income gap in, uh, in America, perpetuated by the donor classes duopoly, we are seeing massive strikes all across the country. Essential workers from Amazon, Whole Foods, a.k.a. Amazon Food Inc., Walmart, Target, Instacart, and FedEx are all planning a walkout during lunch on May 1st. Most of the spotlight is on Amazon, who has made an additional $24 billion during this pandemic. This was achieved by putting workers' lives at risk. I mean, Amazon has over 500 cases of the virus in over 125 facilities across the country. And all of these reports were coming in from the rank-and-file employees of the warehouses where social distancing rules were ignored by the bosses. An Amazon spokesperson made a statement about these reports, saying, while we respect people's right to express themselves, we object to the irresponsible actions of the labor groups in spreading misinformation and making false claims about Amazon during this unprecedented health and economic crisis. We have gone to extreme measures to understand and address this pandemic I mean, these measures that they're talking about is to call the strikers a bunch of assholes and firing them for organizing and demanding to be treated like human beings. And, I mean, what more could these strikers want? You know, Bezos has ensured that their health needs were not going to be met and that they were going to be worked to utter exhaustion so he can have the privilege of Nancy Pelosi feeding him ice cream on, uh, on a giant felt throne. I mean, anything else would clearly be a handout. Look, corporations like Amazon, Target, Walmart, uh, all use their employees' lives as hostage negotiations. The choice that these employees are given is either to work in the conditions that can get them sick or have their homes, cars, and even their families repossessed. I mean, from a PR perspective, a corporation acting like a terroristic mobster doesn't really play well. The only way this could get worse is if Bezos and the Waltons stood in front of their mega mansions and repeatedly just punched an orphan like every hour on the hour and and like they didn't even say that they were going to take him to the hospital. Look, if we are to say that these workers are essential, why are we treating them like they're expendable? In lieu of the strikes and the folks having to take sick leave, Amazon has ramped up its hiring and is offering only an additional $2 an hour extra for hazard pay. I mean, this is the same thing that Target's been doing, Walmart and FedEx. If these workers are truly essential, then these corporations won't have any issues meeting their demands to prove that they actually are. And their demands include compensation for unpaid time off, paid sick leave, hazard pay, protective equipment and cleaning supplies, and full corporate transparency on the number of cases in these facilities. These are very reasonable requests, and these corporate oligarchs and slave masters are claiming that these workers are asking for the heavens themselves. They're like, we ask for paid sick leave. That, That is the moon? You are asking for the... How dare you? You are asking for the moon. We're asking for hazard pay for putting our lives and our family at, at risk. You, you are asking for the rings of Saturn itself. 
okay, the rings of Saturn itself. We want corporate transparency. Well, well, now you're asking for Pluto to be a planet again, and I cannot change the laws of the universe, for I am but one man. Meanwhile, Big Plastic is literally asking for the, the government for a billion dollars because recycling is essential. The American Chemical Council, what a lovely name, with the Recycling Partnership is asking for a billion dollar handout despite netting over $200 billion annually. These companies work with oil giants like Exxon, Chevron, Land Access, and plastic users like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Nestle. Okay, if they need that money so badly, why not take all these plastic bottles that they produce and, and, and send them to, to all those recycling plants? You know, I'm, I'm sure they'll get a good 10, maybe even 15 cents per bottle to cover their costs. And Tyson, America's largest meat processor, used a paid ad to tell the world that the supply chain is breaking and that the meat processing plans need to be opened back up. Now, they could have used that money and sp instead of spending it on their ad, they could have provided all their workers paid sick leave. But instead, they decided to invest in more greed and Trump obliged by using the Defense Production Act. Now, unions have been saying that the meat processing plants weren't safe to begin with. And now, with the pandemic, it's even less safe. Tyson and their meat compatriots would utilize the same course of action that Amazon and Target did by not providing their workers with masks and putting out an empty, vapid statement about health and safety. Say it with me now, corporations never have and never will care about your health and safety. They only care about their bottom line. The bottom line is they don't give a shit about you and will sell your life if it means acquiring one more dollar of wealth. So why are we as a nation worshiping this lifestyle and mentality? And as for our fight for basic human rights grows, we are also seeing nationwide rent strikes. As over 13 million people weren't able to pay rent in April, May is looking to see an increase of those numbers as 26 million people are now unemployed. And that number is probably going to grow too. The rent strike movement is inviting those that simply can't pay to be included in their strike. Non-payment as an action of the strike means that people are not alone in their struggle. They're also urging folks that can afford to pay rent to stand in solidarity with those that can't. The rent strike demands are to cancel rent for four months or for the length of the pandemic, whichever comes first, a rent freeze to ensure that rates don't go up, a sheltering protocol for all homeless folks, and to make sure that the, the leases are, uh, are renewed, and when they're renewed, that they're renewed at the pre-pandemic rates. And this goes for mortgages for small landlords, too. The same thing applies. And before everybody freaks out and starts screaming that, 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 that this is people uh, asking for, for, for free shit, okay? Remember that the banks got bailed out first. They literally got a handout. They literally made up money out of thin air for these banks. They got $5 trillion, no questions asked. And on top of that, they've been garnering interest from all of our debt payments for years. And as Steve Mnuchin points out, that the $1,200 stimulus check should last an average Amer American about 10 weeks. That means that with a $5 trillion corporate slush fund, these banks should be fine for like 14 quadrillion years. So why would they even need rents and mortgages to stay afloat? I mean, that's, I mean, that's his math. I mean, the numbers are right there. Strikes like these are not pushing for a return to normalcy. Look, normal sucked. Normal was complacency and, and mindlessness. Strikes like these are advocating for a new normal. A normal that gives each and every one of us a purpose and helps us to be mindful to each other. It's a normal based on compassion, logic, understanding, and treating the essential with respect. And it's a normal where we all can end up being essential to each other rather than expendable to earn somebody else a profit. 
a normal where we can appreciate the moon and the heavens for what they are while making this world a better one. Very excited to announce that I have some live stand-up comedy dates. Uh, by live, I mean they're virtual. They're on the internet, you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of shows via Zoom. Um, so uh, it is necessary that you download the, the Zoom platform in order to attend these shows. And it is also necessary that you guys uh, get tickets uh, because that is the way that I'm going to be able to communicate with you guys and give you guys the uh, necessary uh, login information to the Zoom shows so you can attend these shows. What are these shows, Krish? What do you, you, you keep talking about them? Uh, well, uh, the first one is May 2nd at 9.30 p.m. for Pittsburgh Fringe Festival, and that is a very special, exclusive storytelling show called Stories from the Road, where I tell you some tour stories uh, that has happened to me over the course of touring. So it'll be three or four fun uh, little stories with some visuals and things of that sort. Very excited about that. Uh, tickets for those are available right now. Uh, they are pay what you want. They are pay what you want. So if, uh, if, if finances are a problem and you still want to enjoy the show, no problem. Don't worry about it. Grab one of those tickets for free and come hang out. Uh, the rest of these shows are part of the Citizen Revolution Virtual Comedy Show. The first one is on May 8th. The second one is on May 22nd. And the third one will be on June 5th. Uh, all of these are Fridays and all of these will be at 9 p.m. Tickets for the May shows are available right now and they are limited to 20 spots, you guys. There are only 20 spots available. The tickets are already selling, so make sure that you grab them and you grab them fast. Uh, the ticket links are in the description, uh, so go down there and grab them. Uh, and uh, these are going to be um, a, a little bit of a mix. Uh, they're going to have some traditional stand-up comedy and storytelling shows. Uh, uh, just like you, you would normally hear from me if you came to see me at any particular venue. Uh, but they are also going to have some interactive elements. They're also going to have some dynamic elements, some uh, news commentary, uh, some stories that you might not hear on the mainstream. We're going to talk about them. We're going to dive into them. Uh, so it's sort of a multi-dimensional show. Uh, so once again, those dates for the Citizen Revolution comedy show may 8th may 22nd june 5th at 9 p.m and then going forward they'll be on fridays at 9 p.m uh, because as of right now um all of my dates have been uh have, have they're going to be rescheduled uh all the way into july and um so the first real live stand-up comedy date that i will have is in august uh so with that said, you know, doing these Zoom virtual live stand-up comedy events is uh, is how I'm going to be able to do do comedy for you guys. Uh, I've, I've still got the daily videos that I will be putting out. Um, I've still got Forkful of Noodles. I've still got the Dispatches coming out. Uh, but this will be a, a little bit more of a... Um, you know, personal interaction kind of situation. And all these shows will have a Q&A at the very end of them as well. So once again, uh, May 2nd, Pittsburgh Fringe, 9.30 p.m., uh, May 8th, May 22nd, June 5th, and then consecutive Fridays going forward at 9 p.m. are the Citizen Revolution stand-up virtual comedy shows. Uh, you can go get your tickets right now at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, while you're there, you can pick up a copy of my album, uh, which if you get it off Bandcamp is pay what you want. You can get it for free if you'd like to. Uh, you can um, you can check out past episodes of my podcasts and videos. Uh, and you can make a donation if you would like as well. You can make a one-time donation or you can become a sustaining member by a Patreon or directly on my website. Becoming a patron uh, gets you a free ticket to pretty much all of these events. Every single one of these Zoom shows, you will get a free ticket to it just by becoming a sustaining member. Once again, that website is ramennoodlescomedy.com. 
noodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. And like I said, uh, getting that ticket link is pretty important because when you get the ticket link, you'll get a confirmation that you got the ticket. And then in one hour before the show, one hour before the show, I will send you a link uh, to the Zoom show with the meeting ID and a password to make sure that you can get in and enjoy the show with everybody. And make sure that you uh, download Zoom uh, before the show. And also, uh, we have also found that if you wear headphones, it, uh, it makes the experience a little bit better for everybody. Uh, so once again, you can go to my website for all those dates and all those links at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thank you so much, and let's get into this week's podcast. <laughs> 